So why isn't the message getting through? Well, one, uh, the volume has been really low. Okay? So that's one side. And we've, we've done media analysis as an example. Um, the media plays an enormously important agenda setting role in this. Um, because, again, this is an invisible problem to most of us. The only way we know about this is because of what we've learned through the media. As a normal American, I don't know a climate scientist. I don't read the peer review literature. I only know about this issue because of what, excuse me, you, the media, tell me about it. And so when the media doesn't report it, it's literally out of sight and out of mind. And we've seen that this issue gets just a tiny proportion of the, the, the news hole. Of all the stories that the media focuses on every year, climate change is minuscule. Um, and in fact, even the environment as a category never gets above, say, one or at most two percent of total news coverage. But it's not just the amount of media coverage. It's also the fact that there's been a very active disinformation campaign uh, that's been going on for many years. It's very well documented. Uh, that was primarily, certainly originally and still to this day, uh, driven by fossil fuel company interests who are the world's most profitable companies. I mean, they're very happy, thank you very much, with the status quo. Okay. And so what are they saying in this disinformation campaign? Well, historically, this has been the key strategy all along. And in fact, it's a strategy that was lifted explicitly, directly out of the tobacco wars, which is make people think that the science is still unsettled. And if my perception is that the experts are still arguing over whether the problem exists, as a layperson, my tendency is to say, well, you know, I'll let them figure it out and, you know, I'll I'll take this as uh, much more seriously once they, they've reached their conclusion. Okay? So that has been the primary message. That has been the primary strategy of that disinformation campaign, is to get people to believe that the experts do not agree. What you're saying is that the big, powerful industry controls or affects the outcomes of perception in this country disproportionately to what most people think. That's right. And in part, they're able to do that because this issue is a low-level issue, because we don't talk about it, and because there is no what we would call issue public on the other side. What do you mean? Okay, so an issue public is basically an organized social movement that demands change, okay? And we're very familiar with this term. It's the pro- or anti-immigration movement, or the pro-gun control or the anti-gun control movement. Um, the civil rights the movement, civil the rights suffragette movement, movement women's Absolutely. rights. Absolutely. You've got to be organized. You've got to be organized. And what we see, remember that 16% I identified yeah. as the alarmed. Again, people who are very concerned uh, and think this is an urgent problem, but they feel relatively isolated and alone. They say, I feel this way. Some of my friends and family feel this strongly, but they have no sense that they're part of over 40 million Americans that feel just as strongly as they do. They've never been properly organized, mobilized, and directed to demand change. And I mean, that's what the political system ultimately responds to. If you basically have a vacuum of people who are uh, demanding change, and I don't mean that truly. I mean, there are, of course, many great organizations that have been advocating for change for a long time. But it hasn't been a broad-based citizens movement demanding change. In that situation, a relatively small but well-funded and, and vocal uh, community that says no can absolutely win the day. As you know, twice in the last 20 years, the country's tried to take, the government's tried to take a big step forward uh, under the Clinton administration and then uh, uh, under the first year of the Obama administration, and each time the Senate killed it. Yeah. But the key thing there is that each time both the Clinton administration and the Obama administration tried to do this, it was essentially a top-down, inside the beltway strategy. We are going after and trying to cajole and convince and persuade the members of the Senate and the House to pass this legislation mm -hmm. without first engaging the broad public and building a citizens movement, a issue public, as I talked about before, that was actually demanding change. Because in the end, politicians care about their job. And if they don't feel like there's a political price to pay for opposing action on climate change, or alternatively, a political opportunity to be had by being a leader on this issue, it's very easy for them to say, you know what? I've got a lot of other things here on my plate uh, to deal with. I've got lots of lobbyists coming into my office, as well as people back home, saying, do this, do that, do this. And it's not climate change. So until they feel that they have to act, many of them probably won't. So I think 
whereas in the past we've treated this as an issue uh, that we learned about from climate science and that has basically been a few set of political leaders that have tried to impose solutions on this country, on our states, uh, at the world from the top down, um, what we have not done is build the bottom up to meet them halfway. 